Back to the Camping World Series at the Glen Camping World East Series. Mike Hogwood, Phil Parsons, Eric Pernasiglio down on Pitt Road. Antonio Perez has been our leader here in the early going, the pole sitter. Most of these cars have been single file. Is that kind of what you expected? I think so. Look at the 11 well, now, right there. As soon as I say <laughs> that, yeah. look at this. Put the jinx on him right there. You see Trevor Bain on the outside of the 65 car. Stan Silva, Jesus Hernandez right behind that battle. Watch these guys go down and turn number one here. Nick DeBruin, he's from Holland. Driving the Jeff Spraker car, number 37. A little bit wide right there. He's able to get back in line in front of the one car, Trevor Bain. The 11 there of Jesus Hernandez, all out of the DEI stable. The one, the 11, and the 8. You know, Derek talked about road tour specialists early on in the show, and you, know, you have a lot of, when we talk about the international guys, they probably have a lot, ooh, that's, that's tough to go in the beginning of the interloop side by side, but Stan Silva and Jesus Hernandez did, but these guys probably have a lot more road racing experience than do the guys from the United States. Well, you know down in Mexico now, the Nationwide Series heads down there, and a couple of drivers from Mexico have started to make their way to this country, and among them, Antonio Perez. The replay of that little deal going inside into the beginning of the inner loop. Stan Silva was the 65 car, Jesus Hernandez the 11. They made it through there. You don't want to slide off the racetrack there. There's some kidney litter. You can get stuck, because I've been stuck in that part of the race. <laughs> and then you're frustrated. You've got to sit there until somebody can come and pull you out. Trevor Bain currently being shown in the eighth position with Dale Earnhardt Chevrolet. Ooh, trouble. Jody Lavender, hard contact with the inside wall. Lavender spins. Looks like he might be able to drive away from that. But some damage to Jody Lavender, who's known throughout the southeast as a great short track oval racer. So that's turn number one. You see, that's it's a little bit loose coming off turn number one. Slides into the inside tire barrier. A lot of damage to the bodywork on that 88 car. For Helio Lopez, the 03 car, he's being shown in the 10th spot. Really expected him to do well here. This is Rogelio's second full season in this series. He won at the National Fairgrounds last year, his first race ever. That was a huge win for NASCAR's diversity program, it was. I think. It, indeed. Shows you there's a lot of talent all over the world. Mark Davis, the 18 car, following the 44 Peyton Sellers. Again, most of the leaders now in single file. There's Craig Ghost. We had told you a moment ago had some trouble. Mark Davis trying to pass Peyton Sellers. Got a run coming off the top of the S's there. Let's see what he can do as they enter the inner loop. I think he's going to get him. Ooh, Peyton's going to oh fight my. back. Ooh, not, not going to quite make it now. Mark Davis is going to have the preferred line on the inside of the outer loop down here. Peyton Sellers lives very near a track where a lot of these guys go and test road racing. The Virginia International Raceway, VIR it's called. It's only actually a couple of miles from Peyton Sellers shops. And that's where Austin Dillon stopped on the way here with his car that he's racing here today. Did the Bondurant School earlier this year. Out in Arizona. It is a different feel to the race car, some different techniques. There your top two, Perez and Kovalak. Matt Kovalak's not giving any ground up there, is he? Perez has right not been him. able to get away from him whatsoever. Matt gets a lot of good runs. Not quite able to. He's not quite able to outbreak Perez. Perez is really hard on the brakes. Brakes real late. Matt's been trying to sneak to the inside there to take a peek to see if maybe he could do it, but hasn't been able to yet. wheels sometimes getting off the ground coming off of that inner loop. Stan Silva, 65, Jesus Hernandez, the 11. Jeff Anton gets turned around over in turn number one. And 
Anton's the guy who admitted this is a track he's going to have to figure out. Ooh. Fred Gosh of the two car was involved in that. They made some contact in there in turn number one. Matt Kovalev coming down pit road. Well, this is obviously a scheduled stop. You talked about it, Bill. You work backwards. Matt trying to beat maybe the first car on pit road. Now, once he gets back on the racetrack, he hopes the caution flag comes out because then he will have the track position over everybody that comes down pit road on the caution flag. Meanwhile, Perez now it gets rid of the guy he had on his rear bumper this entire race. So a little drama involving pit stops. Perez leads, but watch out for Kovala. Welcome back to Watkins Glen, New York. Watkins Glen International. We're seeing a number of pit stops there. It's Rogelio Lopez. Interesting strategy here, Phil. It seems like that pit stop that Matt Kovala made just opened the floodgates, and everyone said, well, if if he's going to do that, I think we need to as well. You can make the race on one stop, but the question was, when would you make it? I think Matt Kobluck, once he got in this window where he knew that he could make it the rest of the way, I think that's when he wanted to come down pit road. And again, just about the rest of the field has followed him down pit road. Well, the only other factor that we could have is, particularly if you see the sky here, it is getting rather ominous. Rain would somehow come into the picture here. This is a 55 lap race, so all they would have to run would be 28 laps to be, to be an official completed race. So, you know, do you do you want to maybe gamble on rain? Do you want to stay out? Just think maybe it's going to rain. Well, Jeffrey Earnhardt's not. He's in to the attention of his DEI crew. Ricky Carmichael, the four car, Carmichael, the four car on pit road as well. And again, you're, if you're wondering why they're not changing tires, well, you're not allowed to. They build a really good tire here, Goodyear does, and this is a sport where you want to try to make it as equal as possible to as many teams as you can. And so you run the race on the four tires you start off. Yeah, and it's also a cost-saving measure as well. You don't have to buy another set of tires, and, and you don't have to import a pick through here to change tires. So it does make this series a little bit more affordable. There in the background, you can see that sky. It's getting awfully dark. Jeffrey Earnhardt. Ooh, a lot of, there's Jody Lavender's car. Remember, we saw him hit the inside wall there just at the exit of turn number one. But he has stayed on the racetrack with all that damage. Lavender, who has run part-time in seasons before, but has run all the races this year. Somebody's off the course. It's behind that sign, we can't really tell who it is, but I'll tell you, it's a rookie. I see the yellow stripe. And we won't be able to tell from that camera angle because that car is stuck right now. So in other words, you can see Zippo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Very nice. Sorry. Very, very nice. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. More than likely, we will have a local caution, and that car, again, is going to be stuck, so I think that will necessitate a full Porsche yellow. There's the caution waving right there. Have you ever gotten off into this gravel stuff over there? I have, and that very part of the racetrack, that's the inner loop down there. One time I was going through there and just got a little bit loose and slid off and, and got stuck and ended up costing me a lap. Once I got back out, then I had a good race car, but I found myself a lap down. Because when you get in it, you're not getting out without help. You're not getting out of it, but it saves you from that tire barrier over there or the guardrail. So it's a great move by the officials here at Watkins Glen Raceway to, uh, to have that runoff area basically in the sand traps. Caution is out. Antonio Perez is still our leader in his Dodge. But the story is Antonio is yet to make a pit stop. Yeah, more than likely this caution flag will bring Antonio onto pit road. And I would guess that Matt Kovalev, who already made his green flag pit stop, will stay on the racetrack. There's Brian Eichler right there, the 15 car. Eichler has not made a stop either, so. I think most of the field has made pit stops. Once Matt Kovalev came down pit road, we saw so many of the cars on pit road in the lap or two after that. Here's another look at that sky, which has been looking threatening all day long here at Watkins Glen. So we're 
right there. I'll say. Well, let's just hope that the rain somehow stays away from the Camping World East Series. At the glance. 